In order to effectively deliver deadly accurate first round hits on targets at extended ranges, the long range marksman must be equipped with the proper tools to get the job done. So what exactly does a long range weapon system consist of? Basically a long range weapon system is going to consist of the shooter himself combined with the appropriate rifle and optical sight combination outfitted with the proper ammunition for the job and the peripheral equipment needed to assist in the effective determination of a firing solution that is custom tailored to correct for all the meteorological and environmental conditions that will affect the flight path of the Ready? bullet. So uh, it's the entire system. We're going to discuss yeah. uh, each one of these components in detail as we go along. Oh, you got it's it. also important to note that uh, different long-range missions will demand different prioritizations of weapon system attributes. The equipment selection procedure hinges directly upon the specific mission requirements that need to be filled. So in order to determine what uh, equipment we're, we're going to require, we're going to first have to ask ourselves some basic questions. What is the nature of your target? Is it a soft target like a game animal? Or is it a hard target like an enemy missile battery? Or are you just shooting competition or for fun and the nature of your target doesn't matter? The nature of your target will determine what terminal ballistics characteristics are required for your mission. What's the maximum potential engagement range of your target going to be? Look at your area of operations and determine the maximum effective range of your cartridge projectile combination. The cartridge you selected will help you narrow down which rifle systems are available in that choice. Some rifles may be uh, quickly eliminated from your list if they don't offer the appropriate cartridge options. Uh, we did a pretty thorough examination of cartridge and projectile selection procedures in the preceding videos, so make sure you go back and check that out if you missed it. Another question you can ask is, what are the dimensions of your target going to be? Is it going to be real tall and narrow? Or is it going to be flat and wide? This will tell you what kind of external ballistics will be desirable given your mission parameters and will also have a major influence on your optics selection and even your peripheral equipment selection in some cases. And we'll talk about that as we come across these different components. You also need to ask, uh, what amount of port portability will you need to have in your weapon system? How much stuff are you going to be carrying around and uh, how far are you going to be carrying it? What kind of firepower are you going to have to be able to deliver? Are you, uh, maybe you're a designated marksman working in tight conjunction with an infantry unit pushing through a target-rich environment. You might need a long-range weapon system that can also produce adequate amounts of firepower to engage multiple targets in short order. You might have to ask yourself, are you going to be operating in extreme environments? and need equipment that will hold up to certain meteorological conditions, this is going to have a big influence on your rifle choices and even your optics in some, in some extreme cases. All of these questions need to be answered thoroughly before the appropriate long-range weapons package can be identified. There are, however, certain requirements any long-range weapon system will need to be able to deliver. For any long-range shooting purpose, the rifle, whatever rifle that's going to be, must be able to consistently produce the degree of precision required to successfully engage the target with confidence on the first shot and then be able to continue to deliver that level of precision shot after shot after shot. So precision is going to be the number one criteria for any long-range weapon system. Precision is absolutely fundamental in delivering consistent accuracy at long range. Not only precision in your rifle, but especially precision in the turret adjustment system of your optical sight. So what's the difference here? What do I mean when I say precision and accuracy? A lot of folks assume that accuracy and precision are synonymous, but there's actually a pretty big difference here. In science and engineering, the term accuracy specifically refers to a measurement or the degree of closeness of a measurement to a specific target value. Basically, how close something got to the specific predetermined target value. Precision 
is the measured reproducibility or repeatability of a system under unchanged conditions. Basically, something that shows the same results time after time. Mechanical or scientific exactness. In plain shooting terms, high precision would be evident in like a very tight group size where all your shots are hitting pretty much in the same place. That's precision. Accuracy, on the other hand, would be specifically referring to how close you actually got to your target. So there are two different terms, and uh, we'll be referring to accuracy and precision here, just so you know what we're talking about. In the long-range shooting world, we require both accuracy and precision. We not only want to have the ability to hit the target accurately, we want the degree of precision necessary to do it consistently shot after shot. Achieving accuracy is mostly on the shooter. You must do your part to put the bullet where it needs to go. But precision starts with the weapon system and then shifts over to the shooter when the shot is actually made. So really, you are the primary part of your weapon system. In long-range applications, the accuracy and precision of your weapon system will rest primarily on your marksmanship skills. You are the number one component determining the accuracy and precision your rifle system will be able to deliver. Some have the idea that the rifle is the one that determines all these things. I mean, sure, the rifle and its ammunition is like really important as well, but most rifles and ammunition, even a lot of this stuff we consider junk, is going to shoot much better than any of us can hold anyways. So it is the shooter, not the rifle, that is the main thing that really determines the accuracy and precision of the system as a whole. The second most important component to a long-range rifle system is uh, something a lot of people kind of skip over real quickly, and that is the optical sight you're going to use, the scope. Consider for a moment all of the things we're going to be calculating to make a long-range shot. You're going to be figuring out the angle of fire corrections, barometric pressure changes, ammunition temperature burn rate curves, and everything else that we're going to spend all this time figuring out. All of that stuff will be dialed in and compensated for within the interior mechanics of the optic system we have mounted on top of our rifles. So if you're shooting a deer at like, let's say 971 meters and your barometric pressure is dropped by like 1.72 inches of mercury from standard air conditions and your ammunition temperature has gone up by 34 degrees, which has increased your muzzle velocity by 33 feet per second. And you accurately calculate your spin drift and your windage and everything for that range. You're going to want to be 100% sure that when you dial all that stuff in on your scope, that your scope will adjust with absolute precision and index exactly to where you put it. Let's say we calculate a firing solution for 970 uh, meters with the above conditions I just talked about. Um, and your, your final firing solution that you got was you had to dial in on your scope 8.5 milliradians of elevation. And you dial in that 8.5 mils on the scope. And let's say you have a, a scope that wasn't specifically designed for long-range applications. And the turret actually only moved 8.1. It clicked all the way, but it didn't move on the inside. You're going to hit like 16 inches below your point of aim and completely miss a deer by, by probably about a half a foot just from that 0.4 uh, mil change. So when you index your scope at 8.5 mils at long range, you want it to move exactly 8.5 mils. What may seem like a tiny error turns out to be a complete miss at long range. So it is crucial that you have optics that will track with absolute precision 100% of the time. Now, given the huge variances in quality and design of the various rifle scopes available in the world today, Strict attention, especially strict attention, needs to be paid when selecting long-range optics. You want to make sure that your scope will adjust with precision, not 98% of the time, not 99% of the time, but 100% of the time. 
You should, I mean, you should be able to dial in thousands of firing solutions and crank that thing back and forth all day from one end to the other and it, have it track exactly where you put it every time. That's the main criteria for selecting a long-range rifle scope. So uh, if your scope can't do that, you're going to need to uh, re-equip. And yes, there are a few very affordable choices for those of us who are on a budget, so you don't necessarily need to spend like $1,900 on a Night Force or 3400 bucks on a Schmidt & Bender or something. Uh, we're going to spend a good deal of time discussing optic selection for different long-range shooting applications as we work our way through this equipment selection portion of our Long Range 101 video series. So we'll get to that on one of the next videos here. We're just going to talk all about long range optics selection. Very, very, very important video. Don't miss that one for sure. You can miss the one on rifle selection, but don't miss the one on optic selection because that will really, really hose you if you don't do it right. So as we said before, the long range accuracy of your weapon system will hinge on your ability to accurately determine your range to the target, Properly calculate all the physics that will affect the flight path of your bullet. Properly convert all those factors into an accurate firing solution and index all that stuff onto your optical site. After that, if your scope is operated properly and has adjusted by the exact amount that you dialed into it, it's again back on you to uh, practice your marksmanship skills so that you can put the crosshairs where they need to be and follow through with all the fundamentals of long-range marksmanship that are going to be needed to make the shot successfully. So the main point here to realize what I'm trying to make is that the operator of the system himself is the primary component to any given weapon system. Case in point, let's say you hand a $10,000 weapon system to some dude on the street or even to a, an accomplished marksman. But if they are not specifically aware of exactly how that particular weapon system operates and what they need to do to make it work, they're not going to be able to make it work at all. At long range, there's way too much stuff going on to, uh, for luck to really take effect. You're not going to just hit stuff by luck at long range. You're going to have to really get everything dialed in perfectly. Well, I mean, one tiny little mistake or miscalculation or breach of procedure and you're going to miss by feet or even tens of feet at extended ranges. That's not uncommon to happen. I mean, it's real easy to miss at long range. So it's really all on the shooter and his ability to put all the different things together, all the science together to make everything work and then to be able to deliver that long range shot successfully. Probably the most focused upon piece of equipment in a long range system has been the rifle itself. Usually when you talk to people about long range uh, equipment, they go straight to the rifle. Well, actually it's kind of interesting because when it comes to choosing rifles, this is, a, this is one area where we have a lot more leeway to choose what we like. Optic selection is not going to be like that. That's going to be very, very particular. You're going to have to get the exact right equipment for that. But when it comes to rifle selection, there's going to be countless rifle choices that are going to do their job very well. So before we get into the details of these individual uh, equipment components, let's do a real quick overview of everything that we're looking at in an effective long-range weapon system. The first component that we talked about in, in an effective long range weapon system is the operator or more preferably the shooter spotter team. If, if you can get two people together, that's way better than just one guy. Unfortunately, I've been kind of forced a lot of times to kind of go out by myself because uh, there's not a lot of guys around here who are really, really into the long range stuff who are willing to go out as many times, you know, but uh, if you can find a spotter, or a, or a shooter that you can spot for, that's going to be highly advantageous for you. So you are going to be the one putting all this stuff together and making it all work. You are the primary component of the long-range weapon system. There's really no way we could do just one video covering everything a long-range operator should know. Really, this entire series is kind of an attempt to get you started and equipped to be an effective long-range marksman. Uh, we're going to try to get you in this video series to be able to milk every last inch 
out of your uh, maximum effective range of the cartridge bullet combination you picked. So this entire video series is really covering the operator because this is all the stuff you're going to need to know. Uh, the second major component that we already covered of an effective long-range weapon system is the ammunition, specifically the cartridge and projectile combinations. And we discussed all this in detail in the preceding videos. Uh, these components of the system have a huge bearing as to what your capabilities and limitations will be. The limits of how far you can shoot and what you can put down will hinge upon the limiting parameters of your cartridge and projectile choice. So if you missed those videos, you, you might want to go back and check that out and uh, we'll discuss the dynamics in more detail on the, the videos that came before this one. The third component uh, I talked about a little bit already is the optics. So as we just discussed, this is the piece of equipment that really separates a serious long-range rifle system from a regular old deer rifle or a regular battle rifle or something. You will not be able to deliver any degree of consistent long-range precision or accuracy with the wrong optics. So before you purchase a scope for your long-range setup, be sure to carefully research this subject. I mean, you could hand me a $5,000 sniper rifle with the wrong scope, and there is only really so much that can be done with it, even if it's a high-dollar scope. I mean, just because a rifle has an expensive scope doesn't mean that it is designed for what you're going to try to accomplish with it. A lot of guys, when they start shopping for a good long-range scope, kind of focus on the glass, for example. But really, you can have the most clear lenses in the world and even the best quality of manufacture. But if that particular scope has the wrong features... It's going to be totally stuck in the mud. I mean, like a $150,000 Ferrari in a mud bogging contest. Quality and price alone don't dictate the effectiveness in any piece of equipment. I mean, you have to be aware of the features that you're going to need to select for in a long-range scope. So uh, the rifle, that's the one we're going to probably hit on next here. Uh, that's uh, contrary to popular belief, like we said before, this is one part of the long-range weapon system that is really flexible as far as selection. Most modern centerfire rifles have the potential to be used in a long-range setup. Some may require a small amount of work or uh, custom-tailored ammunition in order to deliver the accuracy potential needed, but you don't need to spend a lot of cash on the rifle necessarily. If you just think about like Carlos Hathcock, the famous Marine sniper in Vietnam, who basically wrote the book on modern uh, sniper tactics, that guy used a plain Jane Winchester Model 70 30 odd 6 hunting rifle with the skinny light contour hunting barrel. And he used that rifle to make all those record shots if you may, that you may have heard about on the History Channel or whatever. I mean, the rifle was basically just a regular old deer hunting rifle. He was equipped with the proper optics, of course. And yes, the rifle was very well kept up by some very talented marine armorers, and they did little accurizing jobs on it and stuff. And basically, that thing served Carlos Hathcock very well all throughout the war. So for rifle choice, if you have already uh, selected a cartridge and projectile for your purposes, pretty much any modern rifle, as long as it has the right twist rate for your bullet design that you picked, can be made to shoot very, very well. So your rifle options are many. We'll get into more of that in the coming video here. The other part of the uh, long-range uh, weapon system is going to be all of your other peripheral equipment. This is going to uh, include all the other things and gadgets that are going to assist you in making that perfect long-range shot. Bipods and sandbags for establishing good, solid shooting positions, meteorological equipment like barometers, anemometers, thermometers, and all that stuff that's, that's going to be absolutely crucial for making shots, especially at extended ranges. You're going to need like range finders maybe uh, that are going to help you speed up your target engagement time. Uh, you're going to have equipment to help you calculate your angle of fire, make your corrections for actual uh, horizontal range. All those mysterious tools that are going to assist you in calculating a more precise firing solution. And um, all, all that other tackle that long-range shooters like to carry around with them and, you know, to do what they do. 
we're going to go through all that stuff in detail as well and tell you what kind of stuff really works and tell you what kind of stuff is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. So we're going to share our experience here on this uh, video series. So considering we've already covered cartridge and projectile selection in detail, it would probably be the most natural to move on to rifle selection next. Even though optic selection is much more crucial, we're going to try to get this rifle selection out of the way while we still have cartridge and projectile dynamics fresh in our mind. So uh, here we go. This next video is on rifle selection. Eight nine zero. Confirm. Green light. Hit. Oh, you got it! Holy cow, you got it!